is the story of an old soul. A rich civilization, wrapped in the cloth of a young and resilient nation. It is the story of an African gem in which harmony in its truest form comes to life. Social, religious, and cultural harmony. Everything about this incredibly unique place leaves you breathless long after your departure. Its history, its imposing natural beauty, its calm sea coast and rich soil, its energizing sunrises and soothing sunsets, and most notably, its generous, welcoming, and unpretentious population. Whether one is interested in the history of human evolution and ancient archaeological discoveries, or tales of a rich oral tradition from pre-colonial Africa, or learning about how both Christianity and Islam relied on this corridor as a gateway to the African continent, the story of how its freedom fighters declared independence by defeating an enemy backed by two global superpowers of the time. A walk through a maze of clean and safe streets, citing architectural wonders. Eritrea's story leaves explorers of every taste craving for more. The country's location in the Horn of Africa, boarding 1,000 kilometers of the Red Sea, housing over 350 lands, is a whole set of gifts waiting to be explored. With its capital city perched at 7,628 feet above sea level, recently declared a World Heritage Site, and breathtaking mountains leading to the most pristine coral reefs, the country quite literally offers three entirely different seasons in a bit over two hours. The country is divided into six regional zones, a policy that deliberately blurs ethnic lines so as to broaden one's loyalty away from narrow groupings, which is too often the cause for tension and conflict. Each zone offers a different version of the Eritrean mosaic, making one wonder how is it that the people of this country manage to overcome noticeable differences in culture and religion and forge a sense of oneness and belonging to country, to flag, to an equal share of this land. Therein lies Eritrea's well-kept treasure, unity in diversity. What makes this country unique is its people, a colorful tapestry of nine ethnic groups, each known for three sacred characteristics, an unshakable unity woven into their diversity, superhuman levels of resilience, and an incredibly proud sense of a can-do spirit. Eritrea is a place where values such as love for truth, respect, for one another, camaraderie, and genuine care for country and country folk are firmly rooted in the fabric of the society and are a product of a shared struggle for freedom. All of this, tied together, if looked at from a bird's eye view, explains the sense of tranquility and safety when one roams the country streets. From the most remote villages, to the busiest urban centers. The country's pre-struggle history spans from the time of the Lady of Bua, a one million year old fearless woman whose near complete cranium was discovered just recently. This is the earliest finding. We call it the Hawa or the Buya woman. It was found in Buya around 200 kilometers. It was found in 19. 94 uh, by Italian geologist. It's a full cranium, so in most findings, it's rare to find a full cranium on the paleontological eras. So uh, this cranium belongs to the 
uh, homo erectus on the human evolution, evolution process, process as we see in this chart from the realm of the science up to the homo sapiens uh, sapiens so this is a skull which belongs to the progressive uh, homo erectus which is from 1.4 up to 1.8 uh, million it, it dates back to 1.4 up to 1.8 million years ago so this is also uh, other archaeological or paleontological fossils and uh, stone tools we found from the uh, Buya uh, site. So this is from the Mulhali Amo. It's, it's, it's a large collection of uh, stone tools. So thousands of such uh, stones were laid there. So the ethnographic section, section it contains the uh, ethnographic setting of the uh, six ethnic groups out of the nine ethnic groups found in this region or in the northern Red Sea region. The fourth section is the colonial history section. It's about the uh, 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 colonial history of Eritrea in this, uh, specifically in this region from 1557 when the Ottoman Turks conquered this uh, uh, region up to uh, the final conquerors of Eritrea or colonizers of Eritrea, which is the Ethiopian uh, colony. So the final section is the uh, historical section is or the uh, military section. It's about the Eritrean uh, army struggle which conducted from 1961 up to 1991. So the, our museum is a general uh, museum. To the time of the forefathers and foremothers of the early 1900s, whose fierce resistance to colonialism first lit the fire for an independent Eritrea. Afghans was captured from Ethiopian army and fight against Ethiopian fighters. And most of the guns was uh, to be modified by Ethiopian fighters. Right. For example, uh, the big weapon, the uh, BM-21, was in 1980s, they modified by Ethiopian fighters and they put inside the boats, even also in the cars. This was not even designed to carry that gun. It has been modified from another piece of equipment for the boat. Yeah. Free at last. Free at last. Unfortunately, the hostile attitudes of the post-World War era towards the proud African nation did not change even after it was able to prove its just cause. In fact, by some measures, the antagonism became more intense. The strategic interests of certain Western capitals in this easternmost peninsula of the continent have been used to justify misguided policies of divide and rule, and Eritrea, which celebrated a mere 30 years as an independent African nation on May 24, 2021. Eritrean's principled leadership with President Isaias Afwerki at the helm, whose only sin is calling for peaceful coexistence and refusing to mince words when discussing the interests of this region, has withstood the most unwarranted demonization for years. PIA speech for the 1970s, speech at AU. Everything from illegal sanctions causing economic strangulation to political isolation was used to try and force Eritrea's leaders into submission. Despite all these unwarranted attacks, however, Eritreans have remained defiant and are determined to control their destiny, anchored on truth and honor. This resolve, this pride in their ability to withstand prejudice and injustice for close to a century and still be able to rebuild their nation from scratch is something visitors get a sense of as soon as their plane lands on Eritrean soil. In President Isaiah's own words, all that we have achieved, we did on our own. Independent Eritrea gets to work. The blueprint for prosperous and socially just Eritrea, where every citizen has an equal share of the basket and was drafted long before it hoisted its flag as the 182nd member of the UN in 1993. From the outset, Eritreans understood that declaring independence is the first half of the battle. 
The second, more difficult path was going to be nation building. The current generation of history inheritors, the Warsai nation, whose discipline resolved to build a nation from the ground up while defending it whenever necessary, will prove to be the foundation of a prosperous Eritrea in the very near future. Eritreans have an incredibly humbling commitment to the well-being of their society. But what exactly is at the core of this gallantry? Scratch beyond the surface of this happy-go-lucky population and you will find a well-protected source of energy, an unmatched reverence Eritreans have for those left behind in the fields of Sahel, those whose bones are buried in well-preserved martyrs, cemeteries, dozens of locations around the country. Every Eritrean has a brother, a sister, a mother, a father, a cousin, an uncle, an aunt, that has paid the ultimate price for freedom and for the protection of its sovereignty. engineering, <laughs> the question of Eritrean women's rights did not come about for the benefit of political discourse. This platform was laid out during the bitter struggle for independence. Why was it laid out? Because we had to obliterate gender inequity and ensure change happens in the country. And hence, as Bawi Gambar put forth this honorable edict. And the Eritrean woman, without hesitancy, faced all her adversities and gave what the struggle demanded of her. It asked for disability, she was with disability. It asked for martyrdom, she was martyred. As a cadre, she brought about change in the thinking process with unwavering efforts. I do have a very equal um, job opportunities uh, from my own experience. She's been mentioning that one of the greatest achievements in the Eritrean history is the gender equality passed before, like before 40 years. And we happen to be a part of those people who got the solid foundation based on domination, democracy, and justice. Because of that struggle, we happen to get an equal chance, an equal opportunity at work, at salary, at law, in front of law, in front of everything. <laughs> We're talking about gender equality, right? Well, so yeah, exactly. this country belongs to both the, 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 the sexes, right? The male and, and, and female. So if it is about keeping peace of the country, then of course, both men and women have to do their parts. It's just not about the guys only. So I believe we do have to take part to whatever problems that the country is facing, and I believe they are doing their best. I think we have about six departments. Okay, which different departments do you have? We have uh, the science-based departments. That's, we have department of biology, chemistry, uh, sciences, mathematics, physics, and statistics. If you look at uh, the freshman students, out of the 1,600 freshman students, I think about 51.6% are female. Okay, this lab, this wing, the whole wing is biology department. And most of the geology, geology lab Microbiology, parastology are here. Ingredients are then based on their texture, the different shell medias that we have over here, the TCBS and multiple software. And we also teach them the difference that it makes. Okay. For example, if they grow up yeah. cookie, what kind of bacteria they will recover. So the students understand this basic stuff. The, the school here is uh, really good. Uh, the college, it's for free. Once, and the very important thing, it's for free. 
we don't pay to learn. Everything is free and you learn to become a better person. So we, we learn to contribute to this country and uh, we don't have debts to pay after we we're done with the college. We just learn to, to become better people and to just to make the country better. Well, my name is uh, Akhilil Asmaro and uh, I'm working here as an assistant director and as a computer networking instructor in this training center. Uh, this training center is uh, known as, as Masawa Workers Vocational Training Center. Uh, around here we have about 20 up to 25 trainees. The trainees came from different factories. Uh, the, the installation is with the drills and the, the, the uh, yeah yeah the installing the ducts, just ducts here yeah, in the plastic, the white ducts. Mm -hmm. They have to install it with a drill and all. So it, it's really it, uh, it has to be a physical. Work. Of course, and to mention some of the topics we try to cover there are uh, repair of power supplies of different electronics equipment and uh, solar installation plus mobile repair uh, repairment and uh, CRT TVs plus. Uh, Plus creatives, we try to cover these uh, courses, and uh, this class covers about 20 up to 25 students we receive uh, at each course. My name is Samir Sagar, and I'm a lecturer in the Department of Refrigeration and Air Conditioning, also uh, heating and ventilation. So, uh, in this department, we give uh, training on both on theoretical and practical for the refrigeration. Uh, that starts for domestic refrigeration, industrial refrigeration, and commercial refrigeration. My name is Dr. Amadir Mehrtaab. I am the zonal of the regional medical director. So generally, this hospital is broadly categorized as, uh, into two broad categories, the inpatient department as well as the outpatient department. So coming to distribution of the health facility, at every 10 kilometer radius, we have one health facility. So this is... Uh, this is Mandatara Zona Referral Hospital. We have the outpatient and inpatient services. My name is Danai Senai. I'm a pharmacist and I've been working here for two years. This is the, the, the warehouse where we distribute the pharmaceuticals as well as medical services to the ward part as well as to the pharmacy units. We have X-ray, different uh, X-rays, which are uh, this one is a digital X-ray, which is installed and functioning currently. And we have also another uh, currently procured uh, machines which are not yet installed. Uh, I'm Dr. Arya Bahir, a dentist in Halibut Hospital. I study in Orota School of Medicine and Dental Medicine. I graduate uh, on dentistry, uh, class of 2015. Are the services free? So yeah, all the services are free. Yeah, it's for governmental. Yeah, services are free. Area of this of the site, they use this raw material uh, to build the entire city. This is the Asahaba Mosque, which is the first mosque in Africa, maybe in the world. This mosque is first of its kind, in its shape, design, and it's um, one of the monuments which the Islamic world designed and established it when the religion was ever started. They have to wash uh, their hands and all the proper way of uh, sanitizing. Uh, they have to do their there, there and they come here to pray. And this is very important. This is the mother of all the mosques in the African continent. Uh, as I told you, the farm is a family-owned farm. So, uh, of course, the government helps us a lot because uh, investment is not an easy thing. Especially in the farm, farming is not an easy job. It takes a long time, the payback period is long, the investment is heavy, and it's ne it needs patience also. So we do this job uh, not for only today, but the, gener the, the coming generation will follow it. The, say, for example, if you go to Italy in cheese making, the farm, is, the, when you ask one cheese company, it gives you maybe 200 years of age in history on cheese making something. So we are doing from the scratch that. So our, our next generation will follow that. Then the payback period is not uneasy. But here, to, honestly speaking, the government helps us a lot in this situation because uh, we are not rich family. 
we are working family. So investment in agriculture is not uneasy. So sometimes some shortage happens. So the government gives us an injection in helping this to develop the production. Yeah. It is this source of energy, this solemn promise that Eritreans seem to have made to their martyrs that one finally gets to understand as being the only logical explanation to the extraordinary levels of determination and sense of responsibility that this people have. Remarkably, no matter how far Eritreans travel away from home, this bond remains as strong a push factor to do all they can to uplift their people and country, no matter what field they're in. Nipsey, Tiffany, Alex, Aram, the diaspora demonstration continues. As was said in the beginning, so it shall be repeated in closing. This film is an attempt to unravel the mystery that is Eritrea. An old soul, a rich civilization wrapped in the cloth of a young nation. It is the story of one of Africa's brightest stars whose longing for peaceful coexistence with its neighbors is the driving force behind many of its leaders, foreign policy pronouncements and global stages, pushing peace, security, and cooperation based on mutual respect. Eritrea's history, its people's boundless generosity, its natural beauty, its sunsets and sunrises, leave you breathless long after your plane takes off.